Lionel, welcome. Are you sure you're ready for this? I was born ready for this. Recording sound. Beyond Human Documentary. Cut one or whatever. Triathlon is the hardest sport you can do on the planet. It's the epitome of redefining what's possible. It's flat out. Three to eight hours of swimming, biking, and running. There's nothing that makes you so proud and when your legs are almost falling off and you still can keep going and going and going. Sebastian Kinley, Lionel Sanders, and Heather Jackson are three of the best in the world. It's in your bones, it's in your soul. It's all encompassing to the depth of your being. In 2020, the pros came together to form the Professional Triathletes Organization and launched the Collins Cup, triathlon's version of the Ryder Cup. It's the first of its kind, a total game changer. It's between Team USA, Team Europe, and Team International. The Collins Cup will be the biggest race in the history of our sport. It's head to head. It is mano a mano. I could never let a teammate down. I'm ready to fight. This season, races in Daytona and Miami are two chances for the athletes to earn ranking points to help them qualify. Every race really matters. It's do or die. I like crushing people. Lionel, you got this! I will show you on race day what No Limits looks like. Is that thing recording? If you want to be world champ, then you're me. You got to be the best biker in the world. There's just no other way. There's no other way. Who set this fucking limit? You can't put limits on what's possible. Honestly, though, I'm asking you, who's setting these limits? Lionel Sanders is regarded as one of the fiercest competitors in the triathlon world. Ah! Lionel is probably one of the most intense people I've ever met. Ah! I am an extreme person. I like the mind screaming, slow down, slow down, it hurts. And I like seeing how much further I can go. I get shivers now thinking about it. Come on. Good job. He's a relentless winner. One of the top five athletes in the world right now. On his good day, he's number one. That's it. Week six, what do we do for run workouts? Oh, I did a five kilometer TT off the bike in 1508. And that can guide week six or week seven training. I have a log of every workout I've done since 2010. All written, best to log everything. I have notebooks full of notes and reflections. For me, a good season is how many notebooks do I fill up? We are doing the final preparation for the PTO championship at Daytona. It's a two kilometer swim to an 80 kilometer bike to an 18 kilometer run and it all adds up to 100 kilometers. Inside, I just am screaming to go and to fight. I am going to allow destruction to come out of this body very soon.
We are headed south to Patagonia, one of our favorite places ever. We love just going down there. You have no cell service, no internet. You literally can just focus in on amazing training. Pushing the limits of what's possible is what gets me at the door every single day. Challenging my body in ways that I've never done before. Heather is more than just a star in the women's field. She's the American record holder for the Ironman. She's won five Ironmans and 12 70.3s. She's an extraordinary athlete that is relentless. Heather Jackson! She's one of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. She's one of the most driven people I've ever met in my life. She's one of the most stubborn people I've ever met in my life. One of the sayings we have is to never forget where you came from. That keeps you grounded. I grew up in Exeter, New Hampshire. I'm one of four siblings. I watched my parents work five, six different jobs our entire childhood just to take care of us. I was raised in that, you want something, you better work for it. Heather was the independent one. This phrase goes way back to when she was real small. I do it myself. You didn't interfere, she figured it out and, and mastered whatever she needed to do at the time. I played almost every sport you can think of. I focused in on ice hockey in university. I was captain of the Princeton hockey team my junior and senior year. I was trying for the U.S. ice hockey team for the 2006 Olympic Games. I didn't make the final cut. I had already had that mentality of going as hard as you can, pushing yourself as much as you can. I guess that transferred into my passion for triathlon. The PTO Championships is a lot shorter distance race than I usually train for, so I really need to work on getting my speed up. We're starting to get into more intensity. Getting up 5 a.m. for a swim. Get on your bike for six, seven hours. Running straight off the bike for three hours. You train 35 hours a week. A triathlon is a negotiation between your brain and your body. You're pushing your cardiovascular system to the limits, your neuromuscular system to the limits. You're running at speeds that most of us couldn't maintain for a few seconds, let alone hours. Their ability to do that is phenomenal. It's a grind, but I love it. The ultimate goal would be to be one of the legends in the sport. One of the guys that is not forgotten in 15 years, but who has left a legacy. F12. Sebastian Kinley's resume is never ending. He's won all the world's biggest races. Kinley's greatest achievement, the big one, 2014 Ironman world champion. Even when he's not winning, he's shaking the race up. Everybody's performance has gone up because of Sebastian Kinley.
during lockdown. It's the schools and professional athletes who is allowed to swim here. So I'm one of the few lucky ones. Also er war ein sehr bewegungsfreudiges Kind. Man könnte schon auch manchmal sagen, bis an die Grenze von unserer Belastungsfähigkeit. The first time I came in contact with triathlon, we were visiting my grandma and my father reading in the newspaper about a triathlon that was not too far away. So we spectated at this race. Der Sebastian hat riesen Augen gekriegt, als diese Schwarz mit dicken Neoprenanzügen damals aus dem Baggersee stiegen. Those athletes looked like superhumans. Immer wieder, aber jeden Tag hat der Sebastian erzählt, also Triathlon, das will er machen, was anderes kommt nicht mehr in Frage. That set the tone for the next 25 years. Now I'm focusing on Daytona. Training is really getting intense. In order to succeed in endurance performance, you have to be willing to tolerate the pain which is caused by it. Exercise-induced pain is the kind of burning and aching sensation that you get when you work hard. By getting in tune with that, by understanding it better, it's ultimately going to improve your performance. Also, it releases endorphins. It gives you a feeling of elation. The pain that's caused by exhaustion in our sport, it's not something I fear, actually. It's something I look forward to. The more self-inflicted pain, because I've pushed myself, the more proud I am later. There are athletes that love to suffer. They can probably suffer way more than I can. Lionel is probably able to suffer the most in this sport. He can probably kill himself with triathlon. He's sometimes too much on the gas. I think he's really addicted to that feeling. There's a huge mental component to all of this. I can paint myself as an addict. Do I want me to paint myself as an addict? You know what I mean? Like there's so many aspects of myself that, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a piece of it. In Canada, growing up in a small town of 3,000 people, the only thing to do is to do activities outside. I got into track and field very early on and won most of the running events that I entered. I did it, but I never devoted myself to it at all. When I got to high school, it was like expected that I would be a runner. I was starting to feel like it was kind of an obligation. I didn't really enjoy that. I do what I want, and if you're going to tell me what I'm supposed to do, then I'm probably not going to do it. So then I just started partying. I was just a full-time partier then. I was just smoking weed and all that kind of stuff. And then it just kind of escalated. And I got into cocaine and ecstasy and just, you know, I became a cokehead really over the course of about four years. I went into some darker places and explored those places. 
And then I went inside myself. I was hibernating in the basement for years. Very little human contact. I go up to the grocery store and like not even look people in the eyes. I hated myself. It was bad, you know, I thought about killing myself. I just wanted to escape. I felt really no light in my life. One night, I got a little bit out of hand. His Friends did call me one night and I did bring him to a detox. I feel maybe he trusted me that I was going to help him get out of this low he was in. Some guys are about to go into seizures and stuff from doing math. That was when it started to change in me, when I saw in real life where I'm headed. This is where I will be soon. They're like, dude, you can get out now if you want. You're not all the way in yet. To make a turning point, you have to get to the bottom and then pick yourself back up. I knew that that wasn't going to be the end of his story. I knew he, he had so much more to give. A day or two later, I went for a run. It was familiar. It was something that I felt competent, like I was a good runner. Day one, November 5th, 2009, I started writing it down. And then triathlon popped into my head to do an Ironman triathlon. One of the things we all need is to feel a sense of purpose and belonging, and triathlon gives me all these things. It's a vehicle to learn about myself and to learn about the world around me and to learn how to interact. My whole brain wiring, everything has changed through triathlon. Triathlon saved my life. My perspective now is to inspire other people and show them that it's a worthy pursuit and it's gonna make you a better person. That is much better than a gold medal. I still want that fucking gold medal though, I'm not gonna lie. the first true championship event of the year. The top 40 PTO ranked male and female athletes are in this field. People have not had the opportunity to race. I think we're gonna see desperate racing. It's more than just a race for 2020. It's the only race. A chance to show what you've been doing for the last nine months in lockdown. It's so exciting to be having those pre-race nerves, getting fired up. Ladies, you are in the hands of the starter. Once that gun goes off, it's you and you alone. There's no one else to lean upon. The cannon fired, and now jockeying for position, the best women triathletes in the world. I've never liked the swim. It's always been my Achilles heel. A couple athletes are breaking away here. I know I'm going to be chasing from behind out of the water and it'll just be a matter of if I can close any of that gap. Heather is definitely a few minutes down, but she is a phenomenal bike runner. It's really a matter of, okay, where have I gotten out of the water? And that deficit, it's what do I have to bring back? are flying. This is so, so exciting to see. I have to leave it all out there. If anyone can come back, the 36-year-old from New Hampshire certainly can. 
Paula Finley, first to put the shoes on and start the run portion of the triathlon. Paula Finley continuing to look so strong. She looks calm, she looks confident. It's just taking its toll now on these athletes. You have to push through that pain, that suffering. You can't just stop the second something's uncomfortable. Paula Finley from Canada, the 2020 PTO champion. Daytona was rough. I was just glad it was done. I just want to get out of there as quick as I could. Lionel Sanders is Sebastian Kinley a few years ago. There's this rivalry that they have. Lionel Sanders is measuring up very, very well. My buddy, Keenley made me the athlete I am. He's a guy who made me believe that I could one day be a contender. He inspired me and I said, well, I can be even better. It's the same goes the other way around. Very few people have this aura, I would say, where you can feel the energy from them. And I have a lot of respect for him. When you've gone toe to toe with guys several times in one, of course you believe in yourself. I've not been beaten in the battle yet. If we go toe to toe, I will win. He normally beats me in most of the races, but the thing is, I have three world championship titles and he has one podium at a world championship, so he wins races, but he wins the less important races. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> this guy. Fuck you, buddy, your time's coming. Trust me on that one, bud. You don't fucking think I know this? It burns inside of me every day. I'm not mad that he says something like that at all. It's true. But I have the goods. He knows I have the goods. I love Keenley, but I am, he, oh, I'm gonna fucking destroy you one day. I promise you that. I promise you, and it will be sweet. I kind of love this feeling of that pressure. Your adrenaline is pumping. It makes me feel so alive. The field's phenomenal. Alistair Brownlee, two-time Olympic gold medalist, one of the greatest of all time. And Gustav Eden, 2019, 70.3 world champion. You're dead if you're not nervous. These people are killers. I know it's not fighting, but if they could, they would kill you. And that's fantastic, I love it. Give it to me. The cannon goes off. This is so exciting because there's just so much maneuvering and so much fighting. My swim is not the greatest. Unfortunately, I don't have any talent whatsoever. Lionel Sanders is desperately trying to get onto the feet at the tail end of the third half. I'm working as hard as I can and they're just going, din, 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 drifting away from me and I'm just smashing myself. I know a guy like Gustav Eden, inside he's enjoying the fact that I am suffering and going backwards. These guys coming out of the water now, getting ready for the transition. We got a bunch of Olympians showing their stuff at the front of the swim. Sebastian Kinley, who arguably is the fastest bike rider on the course today, along with the likes of Lionel Sanders, is only one minute down. I was exactly in the position after the swim I wanted to be. Lionel Sanders just out of the water, and this does not bode well. I was like, oh, damn it. This is not gonna be good. Because I had such a deficit, you gotta work harder on the bike. You got a lot of people to pass. You gotta surge more. The guys are really pushing that limit. They need to ride aggressively until this gap is closed. 
Lionel Sanders, who was 3.30 down out of the swim, is currently now 1.24 down on our leader, Alistair Brownlee. That's leader. an incredible move. Where is Sebastian Kinley? We haven't seen or heard from him. I was pretty confident going into the bike, but then uh, it was completely different. Not sure what is going on with Sebastian Kinley, but he slowed right down and pulled off the course. My left leg was completely numb. So I was just not able to push any major power. You think like, oh, there's something wrong. And then it slowly starts to sink in that even if you somehow recover now, it's already too late. There are limits. You don't know where the limit is until you crossed it. And an injury is a pretty clear <laughs> uh, indication that you crossed the limit. The truth is, at this level, sport is never just healthy. When you think about elite athletes and their identity, they predominantly see themselves as a sports person, as an athlete. When you're injured, that identity, it's just thrown out of the window. They feel that a lot of stuff is taken away from them, so it's a bit like grieving, it's loss. You're feeling so helpless. You also start to feel vulnerable. You start to understand that nobody is unbreakable. You're never at your limit. Your limit is created in your mind. I have never seen an athlete that can push their limits like Lionel Sanders. It's just this crescendo of everything screaming, the body, the mind. You're stressing every aspect of the human vessel. Lionel, you got this! Looks like it's the end of the day for Alistair Brownlee. He pulled his cap. Oh, There's nothing okay. he can do. Gustav Eaton out in front and pulling away. <laughs> Gustav Eaton has done it. He's won Daytona. What an incredible race from young Gustav Eaton today. Great race from Lionel. Look at the pain on his face. He gave it everything. If I was happy with fourth, I wouldn't do this. I'd do something else. I learned where I stand. I learned where I where I have I have to improve. I won't let my bike and my run deteriorate. And I'm gonna get that soon in better shape for next time. Daytona was a final cap off what was a horrible year last year. For me, it really did kickstart a different mentality. If you had a bad result, you want to rush yourself back to training, you want to prove yourself, the world, that you can do better. In 2021, all eyes are on the inaugural Collins Cup. It's happening on August 28th in San Marin, Slovakia. It's a massive moment for the sport. We're gonna have the world's best athletes represent USA, internationals, and Europe. Those three are going to race each other in a match play format. This is now the future. It's a middle distance race, longer than the Olympic distance, but shorter than the Ironman. The Collins Cup will be fun to compete with guys who are competitors usually, but will be my teammates. We have mutual desire to inflict pain and we'll relish in motivating each other to do that. I come from a team sports background, so you don't want to let your teammates down, you don't want to let your country down. It's something that brings a little bit uh, fire back in my motivation. A team will be made up of six men and six women. 
The highest ranked four from each region will automatically qualify. The final two will be wildcards chosen by the captains. I'm ranked number one in the internationals. I'm number two in Europe. Currently, I am ranked fifth American female. I've got some work to do. Right now, the biggest focus has been my swim. Not very chatty in the morning. We've been so lucky to be hooked up with a new coach here in Tucson. So we're gonna skull, and then you're gonna go weak position, right? Single arm, plenty of roll in on it. I started back in November and I was working with Justin three times a week, and then Lionel Sanders joined us and said, I wanna be here every single day. I'm a fan of Heather. We're in the exact same boat. We're teammates in this goal of Stop sucking at swimming. Soft hands, Mr. Lionel. Ready? Yep. Lionel and Heather, the way I see them on a bike or running, super confident. Yet both lack a lot of confidence in the water. Feel the float, Lionel. Before you even do anything with the hands, let the water hold you. I am the equivalent to a good six-year-old swimmer. Unfortunately, it doesn't behave like biking and running. You want to run faster? Try harder. Swimming couldn't be further from that, as far as I can tell. Nice job. From Lionel's point of view, no feel. We need to develop feel for the water. So much better, man. So much better. You feel that? With Heather, she really talked herself down to a point where she believed she was horrible at swimming and there was nothing she could do about it. Man, Heather, getting there, girl. Huh? <laughs> if I can get her enjoying herself between repeats, those repeats inevitably are better. And she's gonna be able to carry that into her race. All right, Jackson, let's see if we can beat him down the pool on this one. Ready, yep. There we go. There we go. How have we not known about this guy? Like, this guy's awesome. That's nice work, dude. It's like Rocky Balboa's training gym, but it's a swimming pool. Keep that heart rate down now. Ready, yep. That Daytona race said to me, unfortunately, when you come out of the water three and a half minutes down, back in the day, maybe you'd have won. Not in this era, not with these guys. So it's now or never for my career, really. All right, here we go. Ready. Yep. Is this the last one, Coach? Yes, sir. I'll go all out. Go for it, dude. Ready! It's very motivating to be training with someone that is so driven to be the absolute best in the world that day. <laughs> now he's on her. Now he's on her. He knows splits that Gustav Eden or these other male pros that he's racing what they do. It constantly makes you be like, oh my God, what does Lucy Charles swim or Lauren Brandon? And now I am looking at that stuff because of Lionel's influence. Boom, tie, whoa, 109.3 and a 103.9. Dude, good set. Man, oh man, good work. Good work. <sighs> How was that facing off against each other? <laughs> Unfortunately, the loser doesn't really enjoy competition as much as the winner. <laughs> we are headed to this little track. It's really cool, beat up asphalt. Don't really ever see anyone there. And that's how I like it. I caught wind at Jan Fredino. We'll be at the first race of the year at Challenge Miami. I get a chance to try and take him down. Jan is the best of all time. No one has done what Jan has done and no one will do what Jan has done. Olympic gold medal, two 70.3 world titles, the fastest Ironman ever recorded, Three Kona wins, no one is better. Lionel and I get talked up. There's a lot of guys going after me who 
want to uh, have a dent in my armor. Is he sitting in your thoughts when you're in your training session? Always. Every, every session, I train for this moment. I had a poster of Fredino up on the wall in 2010. I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy now. I used to get so intimidated by watching Lionel's training videos. But I always say, you know, it's the battle of Instagram versus reality. Like stretch it a little oh, bit. Oh, I, I rolled it. I heard it like, I heard a noise. You heard a noise? <laughs> yeah. Might be scrapping this one. It's pretty bad. Really? Yeah. Sharp pain. There's a very fine line between when pain becomes harmful and dangerous and when it actually helps you to push you along. If you feel that your body is struggling, are you able to then step back and give yourself that time to recover? That sometimes a struggle when you know that there's an important event coming up. It's that balance between what's good for you and when are you actually stepping over that line when it becomes bad for you both psychologically and physically. I think we should shove your ankle in an ice bucket and do it tomorrow. Good talk. <laughs> I worry that he's gonna push himself too hard. You can tell on his face probably where he's at mentally and a few times now it's not in a good place. But he will never quit. Either we get it done now or we don't do it. I That's, mean, those are you, the choices. You shouldn't. Can, where are those shoes, bud? His tendon has been. Hyperextended? Yeah. When you have darker experiences in the past, you're always looking at everything that's going on through all those prior experiences. Oh, for God's sake. Pain is inherent in life. At some point, stuff is going to happen to you. It's going to suck. You're going to have to figure out how to deal with it, though. You can at least have a little bit of experience with coping. I will seek out Jan and I will go away on a stretcher if I have to. No. <laughs> My latte art? I think it's probably even worse than my swimming. Another area where I'm probably going to lose against Jan Frodeno. Jan is just the king. Even when it comes to latte art, you can't win against Jan, unfortunately. <laughs> but I would probably be blind on there. <laughs> I decided not to race in Miami because I'm still struggling with the injury I picked up in Daytona. When you constantly try to push it to the limit in everyday training, in my opinion, you will never win, win a big race because you won't last long enough, <laughs> quite frankly. Right now in Miami, I would have no chance. That's, that's a matter of fact, but I don't care. You know, I want to be fit in August. That's when it matters for me. So I'm not going to be fired up in, in March. I let the other people fire their shots in March. We are testing my brand new TT bike. This is exciting, the first real test. We've changed my position quite a bit in terms of the, mostly the front end where my arms are, 
closing the gap between my arms and my head to really get more arrow. And so I'm super excited to see if I can just hold that outside on the road. Triathlon's an individual sport on race day. It's you out there racing, but you getting to that race start healthy and ready and fit and mentally ready is certainly not individual. Okay, don't try this at home, people. <laughs> I'm fired, I forgot to put her computer mat on. This is not how you uh, mount. Uh, oh. I'll just put it in my okay. I credit literally everything I've done in the sport of triathlon to my husband, Wadi. Definitely different. So different good way, bad way, hard to tell. Just different than I'm used to, that's all. He's been with me since I was an age grouper to now over 10 years racing as a professional, being my manager, my agent, my bike mechanic. I mean, he does everything for me. There can definitely be times where it's like, yeah, you just want your husband. I mean, if you want to move anything, just let me know. Saddle feels a little low. Saddle feels low. It can be tough being married to a pro athlete because everything is, you know, 24-7, it's, it's about her. Maybe tilt up. My whole life has been me, me, me. How can I be better? What can I do for myself to be the best I can be? And it's always just been about that. It's been admittedly very self-centered. Being a pro athlete, it's selfish, but it's a window of time, and you have to take advantage of that window of time, and so, I mean, we make a lot of sacrifices. I mean, that looks, like, super good. My head lower? Yeah, I mean, your head's way lower. If you saddle like that, it's, like, really good. I know it won't last forever, so just trying to give everything I have to this journey right now. You turn at the top and get a, a speed run. Heather right now, she's a week and a half out from Miami. We're excited to get on the, the starting line this year in 2021 and um, get a few races in with that new attitude that she's gonna bring. You wanna stop there? No? Okay. Miami in March, no better place to be. Once again, the best triathletes in the world populate a NASCAR mainstay. Today, it's Homestead Miami Speedway. Good afternoon, everybody. We got Jan Prodeno and Lionel Sanders here on stage. I don't think there's any friendship. <laughs> there's no friendship here. Uh, you don't like me. I like him. I don't think he likes me. I don't single him out uh, on the start field as he probably does to me. The reason I'm in the game now is for the battles I'm hoping to have tomorrow. You can't make friends with these people. When that gun goes, this is life and death. I don't want any friendship with you whatsoever. Lionel and I have raced each other many times. We have never actually had that battle. And if Lionel's up there, then I can't wait to race. You have guys like Lionel Sanders saying, look, I'm going to either beat Jan or go home on a stretcher. Honestly, we've raced a few times. He hasn't gone home on a stretcher. He also hasn't beaten me. So <laughs> let's wait and see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty. We all saw what happened in Daytona. Some guys didn't run nearly as well. Young, probably not a great candidate for having that kind of a blow up, but 
Racing over till it's over. It's like sinking in, we're finally racing. The swim and run are gonna be the factors primarily, so I'm excited, I've been working my swim and I've been working a lot of my run. So if it comes down to a run race, just excited to see what I can do. Yeah, this track is, it's definitely more windy, huh? On the women's side, number two in the world, Lucy Charles Barkley of Great Britain will be working to stay in front of the Aussie, Sarah Crowley. But it's Canada's Paula Finley who's riding the wave of confidence after her win at Daytona just three months ago. There are a lot of really fast swimmers, but I've been prepping, I've been training, and I'm mentally ready to fight. And they're underway. You can already see that Lucy Charles Barclay has cemented herself out the front of this race. These ladies just absolutely flying through the water and they're swimming downwind, so they're moving really quickly. We're really interested to see where Heather Jackson is out of the water. She's seven minutes down. I was pretty frustrated, but in that moment it was, okay, shut that off, time to bike and run as hard as you can. There's some really strong women chasing Lucy Charles Barclay. Heather Jackson, even though she is a lap down, has popped onto the group of Paula Finlay and Jody Simpson. Lucy Charles Barclay received a penalty for passing to the wrong side. That's two minutes that they'll be in the penalty box to start the run. It could come down to the wire. The men are starting to make their way toward the water. Every time he starts a race, he takes off his wedding ring, gives it to me, gives me a kiss like it's, this, this may be it, I'm gonna leave it all out there. So who knows, who knows what's gonna happen. I don't think I could have prepared any better, really. There'll be no excuses. And they're off. Lionel Sanders told us that he's been working on his swim. He was almost embarrassed at what happened at Daytona. Went out controlled, eight out of 10, eight out of 10, eight out of 10. And I had good feel. Jan Frodeno, third right now. The time split on Lionel Sanders, he's 55 seconds behind the leaders. I cannot wait to see what these girls do on this run. Here's Heather Jackson. She abandoned the socks in T2. That means Ooh. it's getting Ooh, serious. serious. <laughs> Jody Stimson is closing the gap quickly Very on Sarah close. Perez. Now she takes the lead. Here come the men. They're about to exit the water. Came out of the water with about a two minute deficit. We've got the men on the bike and the women on the run sharing the track. Lucy Charles Barclay, a minute 13 back. Jody Stimson wins Challenge wow. Miami. What an incredible race from Jody. Ninth wasn't what I was going for, but it set the foundation for the season. Um, go back to the drawing board and just keep chipping away towards the Collins Cup in August. Look at how strong Lionel Sanders looks. He's wearing his effort on his sleeve, looking to his wife right now to get splits. Come on, babe! He is absolutely rolling through a pack of men. Andrew Starkowitz first off of the bike and into T2. And here comes Jan Fudino. One of the best runners, if not the best runner in the field. It's only going to be a matter of time before he moves into the lead. How you feel? I don't know. Got to find out, aren't we? Jan Fredeno out in front. We do know that the only person running anywhere near Frodo right now is Lionel Sanders. He's up to fourth already. I felt good and I just built through the run. He is using every muscle in his body to propel himself forward. Sanders is up to third. And you let up, I will find you. You better fucking go, Lionel. I take pride in that. And this is for second. Here we go. Right by he goes. He's not giving up. Jan Frodeno, Miami winner. 
2021. What an incredible performance. Lionel Sanders, 32nd out of the swim, and he comes home second. It's amazing. Every time I damn well race a guy, I come in better across all three disciplines, and every effing time, it's like, not good enough, kid, not good enough. You're doing great, but not good enough. Mr. Lionel Sanders from Canada. If you did your best, you're not down about it, and I did my best. That doesn't mean I've given up. It doesn't mean that I don't feel that one day I can contend. It just, it's just going to take everything. With just a few months to go until the Collins Cup, it's battle stations. There's always this battle, you know, who is the best continent in our sport. The question will be answered. Boys and girls, make sure the champagne's cold. We're out to go get it. Team USA may be the underdogs, but we're gonna take them by surprise. Doubt me, I dare you. Collins Cup is my rematch. Give me Jan, and I will give you the performance of the entire competition. Put your money where your mouth is. 